Hello there, my name is Yupari and I'd like to welcome you into this oil painting demonstration of a still life. And the still life is of a slice of cake. So that is yellow cake with vanilla icing. And the way that we're going to approach this painting is we're going to use an alla prima approach. And alla prima, of course, is a much faster way of creating an oil painting. So we will be creating this painting in one sitting. So let's get to the video. All right, so my palette is consisting of just titanium white, burnt umber, alizarin crimson permanent, cadmium red medium, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. And I'm working on just a, um, I think this is a canvas panel, a very inexpensive canvas panel, kind of the, the type you would buy in a large bundle. And what I did was I just, uh, a couple weeks ago, just toned it with burnt umber oil paint. So I'm going to start off this uh, still life painting uh, with a piece of charcoal and I'm going to make some very light lines just indicating the general placement of the uh, slice of cake. All right, so I want the floor, the surface of the floor to be a little bit further down maybe not that far down let's see right about here perhaps and this is why i'm working um, with charcoal at the moment because look how easily i can erase things okay so if that's going to be sort of the floor um, let's go ahead and just make it level so i actually have another panel of the same type uh, and i'm gonna just kind of eyeball 90 degree here, should probably break out my T-square, but that, that ought to do it. So I don't want it to be centered. I don't want the ground to be centered. I want it to be a little bit further down so that we're looking kind of down at the slice of cake. So let's look at the just the contour of the slice of cake. So here's one side of the cake. So that's one angle. Let's count our angles, one, two, three four very simple now i have to consider the size of the slice of cake um, in relation to all of this negative space and i'm not really worried about making the slice of cake a um, life size that is the exact size of the cake uh, rather i'm trying to think of the uh, overall design of this image so this is in fact um, how I consider composition in a, in a still life painting or a portrait painting or any kind of painting. Just thinking of these simple abstract shapes. Now this is gonna be a lot of negative space. So maybe I should make the cake even larger. And again, this is why I'm working with charcoal. And I'm trying not to press down too hard on the charcoal so that it, it doesn't make too garish of a sound, if that's even a word, too harsh of a sound. All right, so that's about good for the size, I think, of the slice of cake. Uh, that's certainly larger than life size, but that's all right. Now let's think about the plate. All right, so compositionally, I'm thinking of making the plate kind of centered, even though it's a little bit uh, off the side, uh, meaning that the slice of cake is a little bit further on the left than it is towards the right. I'm gonna try to center it a little bit, but I'm gonna still stick to what I'm observing. So let's go ahead and actually just move the slice of cake a little bit that way. Just like that. Shrink it a little bit. Okay, so now the bottom portion of the plate, there's a little thing, a little bottom platform for the plate down here. And then this is going to overlap with that. Now I'm not too worried about making a perfect uh, ellipse right now. I actually kind of freehand an ellipse first and then once I know where I, I 
think that the ellipse is going to be placed, then I'll go in with straight lines and angles, and I'll show you actually how I do that. So let's suppose this is the center of the ellipse, and by center, I mean this should be equal to that. So, whoops, this has to go out here. So, okay, so for the ellipse, this distance here from here to here has to be equal to the distance from here to here. And, woo, that's really off. So this distance is larger than this one, so I gotta subtract from this one. So let's suppose the center is now here. Okay, so now let's look at this the simple little length. There we go. Now they seem to be working. All right, next thing I'm going to do is establish the bottom. So I established the corners of the ellipse. Now I'm going to establish the bottom. So the bottom is gonna be here. So let's just take all this out. Now in perspective, I'm looking down at the ellipse, but I'm not looking too far down. So I have to consider that in perspective, it's not going to be perfectly flat, nor is it going to be a circle. So I'm going to give it my best guess as to the exact perspective that I'm making. So let's also consider our horizon line. I don't usually talk about linear perspective too much, uh, but let's talk about the horizon line. So if I extend my arm um, towards the still life, my eyes would be somewhere about here. So this is my eye. Imagine I'm sitting right here staring at the cake. So that's about where I am. So I'm a little bit taller than uh, the cake. So I'm sitting up a little bit higher than the cake. So I'm looking down at the cake, but I'm not too high up. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, try to create the rest of the ellipse. So let's see through. So let's just go ahead and see through the cake. Again, this is a very simple little arrangement of shapes here. So again, this distance, I have to imagine it all the way up here. And I also have to think about the bottom platform that's sticking out right about there. And just about that, that will kind of do it for the bottom platform. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I want to make it a little lower, perhaps to about there should work. The next thing I noticed is that uh, the bottom platform that I originally placed there uh, has to move. Compositionally, I want to move it because this diagonal is matching perfectly. So if you imagine this is like a bow and arrow, it's gonna hit right here in the connection, the optical connection between the backside of the cake and the plate. Now compositionally, when so many things meet together, it's kind of distracting and I can't explain why, but compositionally that just doesn't seem to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move it down. So let's again guesstimate another little 90 degree angle here. And there you have it. So we moved that platform a little further down, which is okay. Um, I do want it to fit a little bit further down and I want quite a bit of background here, quite a bit of background to kind of um, make it so we're looking down at the cake, like we're going to reach out and um, eat it. So. Now let's go ahead and just put a few little shapes here. Not too much detail, but just a few little shapes. So here is going to be one little little triangle. And um, so there are going to be three layers to this cake. So we have one, two, and three. All right, so what do you say we put some color into this still life? So I'm gonna start off with a little bit of titanium white. 
and a little bit of ivory black tiny bit of ivory black and quite a bit of titanium white just a little bit of ivory black to, to ensure uh, that we're not putting in straight white okay so let's think about the um, the frosting on the cake first think about all the powdered sugar and milk and stuff that goes into um, making this cake so we're using a healthy amount of oil paint so this is a pretty much a loaded brush and a little tip on toning your canvas um, if you're going to use a, a fairly inexpensive canvas or canvas panel like this or i mean any canvas really uh, it helps to tone it with oil and then you'll see um, that the paint just kind of sticks a little bit more nicely Okay, so some light shapes in here for the frosting. This comes up about here. So in terms of composition, I'm going to actually make the background fairly dark, uh, darker than you're seeing it on your screen. So let's push this down. And um, I'm working from life, meaning I'm actually observing the uh, slice of cake, whereas, um, on your screen I took a photograph a photo reference of the slice of cake and I will say that I'm not trying to copy what I'm looking at I'm not trying to make a perfectly photographic rendition of this slice of cake I'm just trying to observe it and paint what I see as it appears to me so there's the other layer imagine you cut up the slice of uh, cake right out of the oven and then you place it on top of the frosting after of course the cake cooled down a little bit now let's go around the back and i'm starting to notice that i made the cake the slice of cake a little bit taller than uh, it is in nature whoops that's okay i'll come back in later and cut this down so let's push this down a little bit and then when we come back with the background color later, we're going to push that down. No worries. So this is going to come back into here. This is going to make a little shape like this. I'm going to use some more paint. And I'm not using any medium whatsoever. Just using the oil paint by itself. Comes down to about like that. All right, what do you say we give the cake the little layer in between? So first, let's get some burnt umber and just burnt umber. Let's go in here. Nice and simple. Just put in this little bottom region of the cake. Very simple there. Even back here, a little slice of cake. And up here. Very simple. Same deal up here. I'm seeing a little bit of that cake going up and down like that. And over there. And I'm even seeing a little bit of it kind of turning like this. And then kind of falling down a little bit like that. Now then, let's get a different brush. And let's use a little bit of yellow ochre some burnt umber so just yellow ochre burnt umber more yellow ochre a little bit of titanium white and there we have the cake and again I'm not using any medium just using the oil paint so titanium white yellow ochre burnt umber fill that in nice and simple same thing down here very simple now i'm going to add a little bit of sap green and some burnt umber a little more sap green and i'm going to put in the little whoops i need a little more yellow ochre so i'm going to put in the little shadow side 
Notice you, you can create a lot of form very quickly in this fashion. All you need is a little bit of light and some shadow, and uh, you have form. That simple. So I'm observing that the shadow looks a little more, more greenish. Um, so what happens with yellowish tones, and this is not always the case, but oftentimes yellowish colors in shadow, uh, depending on the light, of course, tend, tend to look a little bit uh, more green. So now a little more ivory black and a tiny bit, just a touch of ultramarine blue. And now we have the shadow side of the white of the frosting that is. And don't just repetitively put the same mark. I'm going to observe that this kind of swoops in like this. So I'm not trying to be too repetitive with my shapes. So I'm going to pay attention to the application of the brush stroke. So notice how I'm going to go down like this, move, the brush around maybe wiggle a little bit push down move a little bit up and there you have some frosting and i'm not trying to again make it photorealistic or anything like that i'm just trying to kind of have fun with this and a little bit of shadow into there and let's give you a little bit of a little bit of detail into here some little undulations of the cake. Now, I'm going to combine a little bit of burnt umber, yellow ochre, and overlap these shapes a little bit. So I'm seeing a little bit of the cake sticking through the frosting. Again, a little bit of cake sticking through the frosting. And um, some of the frostings even falling down in this direction a little bit. All right, so now let's get a little bit of titanium white and back to the burnt umber. So just titanium white burnt umber. And let's go ahead and paint in these lights here for the dish. Goes around like this, and then I'm gonna scumble a little bit uh, just to make a darker value in a very quick and simple fashion really again not trying to lose track of um, my shape so I'm thinking of that so it still matches up so now let's go ahead and uh, make a little mark here for the middle very simple there and let's follow through straight lines and angle time straight lines you can make some of the most elegant curves with this series of straight lines it's astonishing what you can do with just straight lines and angles goes out a little bit like that and then let's go ahead and just kind of push that paint into there but then of course there's going to need to be the shadow. So switching to some of these colors, I'm going to add a little more of the yellow ochre and now I'm going to use the cadmium red. So I see that the color of the shadow in this area here, it looks a little more red in relation to uh, say the shadow on the cake. The shadow on the cake looks a little more green. So let's even add a touch of alizarin permanent and the sap green. As you know, a lizard permanent and sap green go together very nicely. So again, put that shadow in there and that's way too red. So I'm going to go with the burnt umber again and the sap green to try to, oh, what the heck, let's just cover this first. Let's get our shape first. Again, still trying to see through all of that. Now I'm going to try and mix onto the painting. So let's just take some of these lighter tones. There we have that. And I'm pushing the shadow, the light and shadow uh, 
a little darker. So I'm pushing this contrast a little darker than need be. And I'm going to come back in and um, make them a little closer to nature, but kind of I'm kind of pushing the variation between light and dark. And now we have the bottom portion of the plate. A little bit of ultramarine blue, ivory black, and now we're going to have the bottom. Let's add some burnt umber, ultramarine blue. Now we're going to have the bottom of the plate. Nice and simple there. Let's not forget that there's like a little platform at the bottom. Again, not trying to make a perfectly photographic image. All right, so let's add a little more detail now to the slice of cake. So with a combination of burnt umber and the lizarin permanent, we're going to add a touch of a red, a kind of deep red for the uh, little bits of the cake. It's kind of letting the brush strokes squiggle, kind of mimicking the uh, texture of the slice of cake. Moving this down a little bit, trying to get a little closer to the actual kind of appearance of the cake. So I'm going to add a little more yellow ochre into that little mixture. And this is actually going to go down a little more, a little bit like that. Now let's do the same kind of thing to the bottom. So burnt umber and the alizarin permanent. And here we have just a little tiny glimpse of the cake. Pushing down, then moving up a little bit. There we go. Let's do the same over here. Pushing down and up a little bit. Now with the brush that I use for the frosting, I'm going to get, again, just titanium white. And this time, I'm breaking a rule, so I'm going to be using straight up titanium white. See, that's, and that's a lot of titanium white. So I'm going to just kind of cake it onto the top of the cake. Just pushing it down, using a little bit of impasto now. And, and again, impasto means literally that, like just letting lots of paint stick onto the surface. And uh, if you're going to want to work in pasto like this, um, the icing on the cake literally is like one of the best um, instances to do that. And let's go ahead and let some of the frosting up here stick out a little bit more. And I'm actually going to put a tiny bit of alizarin permanent, maybe a little more than that. Tiny bit of alizarin permanent to mix with the ivory black and create kind of a velvety blue purple-ish kind of color. And we're gonna let this stick out a little bit more. Now back in with the titanium white, just titanium white. We're going to find bits and pieces of frosting that we want to use impasto on. So over here, yep, right about there. And the impasto is so much fun uh, when you're actually applying those thick layers like this. That's a lot of fun, just pushing the paint into there. And I'm going to let it stick out a little more than need be. And that is because I'm going to come back in uh, with the background color very soon. A little more impasto here. Gosh, we're getting carried away. You know what? Let's get the palette knife. Let's get some palette knife marks there. Kind of like butter knife or something on the top of the cake. Yep. All right, so now I'm going to get a different brush and just a combination of burnt umber and ultramarine blue is gonna give us a very distinct dark. Again, not ivory black, just burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And um, now I know that in the photo reference that you're observing, it is not a black background. This is, uh, you can say, kind of artistic license. So I want a very dark background. 
So with the background color, I'm going to go ahead and add a little more nuance to the outside shape of the cake. This is kind of a theatrical looking uh, cake. So this cuts in about there. And while we're at it, I still have to modulate that color. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and yellow ochre and um, try to lighten up this shadow. Come on, shadow, lighten up. I need it to be darker than that. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on um, in terms of the colors. So I'm kind of squinting my eyes to look at this. and. Um, it kind of looks different every time I look at it. So I'm going to just think about the value for now. So the value needed to be a little bit lighter. So let's go back in and uh, with straight lines and angles, get the rest of this ellipse, contour of this ellipse. Very nice and simple there. And uh, let's go ahead and fill in the rest of this. And with that, we have covered the background. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the edges. So um, I want the sharpest edge to be, say, about here. I want that to be my sharpest edge and kind of like a camera focusing into one angle there. And then I'm going to let the rest be a little bit softer. So this area here is going to be softer, but still fairly sharp. So I'm just kind of um, airbrushing it kind of lightly, making this edge softer, but not too soft. Now my softest edge, I'm gonna put right about here. Softer edge there, middle, really sharp. And then I'm actually going to make this a little bit sharper too. So let some little chops show for the top of the cake. Nice painterly little effects there. All right, so here's where we'll make the uh, cake look a little more realistic. So I'm gonna use uh, yellow ochre, titanium white. So just yellow ochre, titanium white. And I'm going to, um, now I'm gonna modulate these values. So again, just titanium white, yellow ochre. Just kind of picking and choosing little areas that I want to be lighter now. It's okay if we picked up some of the frosting. There we go. And I'm gonna just keep tapping at it here to create a kind of surface like what you would get uh, when you take out a slice of cake from the oven, some lighter touches there. And let's let these edges be fairly soft. Now we're starting to get kind of the appearance of the cake. So let's add a little more frosting here. So with a tiny brush with some titanium white, just adding a little touch of frosting. Now let's go ahead and make this edge a little sharper. Just sharpening this edge. And again, just trying to get that little surface here. It's going to sharpen this. Now adding a little bit of ivory black to the tiny brush. We're gonna have some little tiny plane changes here within the cake. Little tiny swoops there. Now we're gonna do the same kind of thing to the bottom slice of cake. So titanium white, yellow ochre. So titanium white and yellow ochre um, gives me a kind of cooler 
closer to, I don't want to say green, but closer to a, a cooler yellow. And um, that's what I'm trying to get at. Now it appears a little greenish to me, these tones, but I'm going to be, I'm going to stay wary of putting um, green into the cake just for the sake of aesthetics. Let's just let some of the texture show. And let's do the same kind of thing to the bottom here. Just letting some of the brush strokes illustrate the texture. And this shape is gonna come out a little further here. So this is how we're adding a little more nuance to the cake. So a little more burnt umber to the tiny brush. And we're going to have a little plane change here. See that a little tiny plane change for the bottom of the cake. Let's go ahead and put a little dark accent here so the cake looks like it's resting on something. Nice and simple. Now for the plate, there's going to be a little bottom plane right about here. So there's going to be just a little bit of a change in value over here. And what we do to one side, we should do to the other. So I'm just going to move this around here, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to add a little more titanium white. So it's just titanium white, and I'm letting some of the tone of the uh, canvas, that is the canvas panel, show through. Really trying to utilize the tone. This goes all the way up here. A little bit more titanium white. And um, let's see, this shape has to move up a little bit like this, not to worry. Now the uh, symmetry of the ellipse is, uh, it's not really the most challenging thing to do here. The most challenging thing really is to uh, observe the shapes in relation to one another. So that is the colors in relation to each other and the values in relation to one another. So I'm gonna push this up. And again, I'm going to leave that shape there, but I'm going to push this up very nice and simple. And with a little bit of ivory black, I see that there's a little tone here that needs to be displayed. It's a little darker tone. It's not as light as that. And again, I want to make sure that this little shape here remains evident. Kind of back and forth now. Very similar to a portrait. Pushing the shapes back and forth, back and forth. So let's go ahead and sharpen this edge a little bit. And again, the value is what's going to give you the sense of form. The colors in relation to one another is what's going to give you the effect of light. So again, let's go ahead. Take a look at this shape here. Just simple straight lines and angles. And with the paper towel, I'm gonna to go ahead and uh, subtract some of this color. So it doesn't distract from the plate. All right, so now it's actually starting to look almost like a slice of cake. So the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, paint this little uh, tabletop color. So I'm going to be mixing right on the canvas. So I'm using burnt umber, some yellow ochre. Let's add in a little bit of cadmium red, a little more cadmium red. So I want it to be fairly dark, uh, but not that dark. So something about like that. And it's all right if we lose an edge there. No problem. All right, so let's see. Speaking of edges, let's go ahead and 
uh, just this edge. I want it to be sharp, barely sharp, just like that. Now I'm going to go and fill in the rest of this. And I want the uh, this little horizon line. It's not really a horizon line, but the tabletop line. Uh, I want that edge to be fairly soft. So I'm going to use uh, my fan brush here. To soften that and to eliminate glare. So while I'm doing this, I'm also going to uh, adjust the shape here for the bottom of the plate. See how this comes in a little bit there. All right, so a little more yellow ochre down here. So let's cut this shape up a little bit. I still want to leave some of this dark there, and I think it might be glaring a little bit. So remember a glare. And in a painting is just basically the paint reflecting the light and then kind of shining which is sometimes a nice effect but um, typically not something that I want all right so now let's look at the other the other side so yellow ochre burnt umber tell you what there should be a little more shadow down here and while we're at it let's adjust the shape so we're at burnt umber ultramarine blue again let's add a little bit of alizarin permanent just for fun just push the paint in there a little bit more than we need try to eliminate some glare There we go. All right, so let's go back in and adjust this shape. This comes in a little bit there. And as you know, this edge I'm going to make rather soft. Just so it kind of recedes. So burnt umber, yellow ochre. Now we're covering the rest of this. And again, this canvas panel is really cheap. It's fairly inexpensive. Um, so that just goes to show you what you can do with uh, fairly inexpensive materials. And remember, I toned it a couple weeks ago with just burnt umber oil paint. Kind of just like this. How you're seeing me fill this in is how I toned it. All right, so back again with a little bit of burnt umber and yellow ochre. I'm going to add a little more texture now. See that? Just getting a little bit of texture for the cake. They're just tiny little specks, tiny little crumbs that I'm trying to, to illustrate there. I'm going to use a little bit of cadmium red and yellow ochre just a tiny little bit for so these tiny little surface details now back to the burnt umber burnt umber yellow yellow ochre again just seeing tiny little glimpses right about here and this is how we're going to finish the painting it's just by adding these tiny little details working from big shapes to the tiny ones and these are definitely the tiny ones some little crumbs here and there just moving moving around just trying to observe these little details. Just a little piece of it here. Some more burnt umber. Nice little dark shape there. 
All right, with that, we have the conclusion of this uh, quick and simple little still life painting demonstration. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. I really hope that this video helps you out. I really encourage you to do a lot of um, practice paintings with still life or even spend a longer time working on still life paintings. They are a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.